So friends, uh, welcome to this uh, uh, presentation session on uh, NEP 2020. Basically, we will focus on the curriculum, teaching, learning, and assessment strategies. आपको सबको आप जानकारी है ये जो हमारा प्रोग्राम है ये भारत सरकार के तहत हो रहा है और यूजीसी इसको अप्रूव किया है जैसे आपको जानकारी है और आप सब लोग स्वयं में जाइएगा स्वयं में डिस्कशन फोरम प्रिंट ऑडियो वीडियो खास करके वीडियो सर हैज कंट्रीब्यूटेड वीडियो एक्सेलेंट वीडियो ओवर दया एंड वेरी होलिस्टिक वीडियो ऑन एन ई आई विल से फ्यू वर्ड्स अबाउट दैट एंड हिंदी इंग्लिश में आपको हिंदी पसंद है कोशिश करेंगे कि हिंदी में भी हो और आप स्वयं में जाइएगा और उसमें प्रिंट और वीडियो को देखिए डिस्कशन फोरम में पार्टिसिपेट करिए डिस्कशन फोरम का टेस्ट और एंड ऑफ द प्रोग्राम टेस्ट पंद्रह क्वेश्चन और पैंतीस क्वेश्चन मल्टीपल चॉइस सौ नंबर का है पचास नंबर लेंगे तो इसमें आपका पास हो जाएगा हमें उम्मीद है आप सब लोग इसमें पास करेंगे ज़्यादा बेहतर ग्रेड लेके पास करेंगे आपको डिजिटल सर्टिफिकेट मिल जाएगा जी हूँ खत्म हो जाएगा लेट अस कम बैक टू दिस प्रोग्राम दिस प्रोग्राम इज बीइंग टेलीकास्ट थ्रू स्वयं प्रभा एंड दिस इज आल्सो साइमोटेनियसली टेलीकास्ट इन यूट्यूब जो यूट्यूब में है आप भी सवाल पूछिएगा और जो स्वयं प्रभा में है आप भी सवाल पूछिएगा वी हैव विथ आस फ्रेंड्स एन अ वेरी एमिनेंट एजुकेशनिस्ट प्रोफेसर के रामचंद्रन who is an advisor in National Institute of Education Planning and Administration NEPA University and uh, he started his career in 1975 to 1990 in NCERT then shifted to UNICEF as senior program officer and senior program coordinator for almost uh, um, uh, 18 years there and then uh, uh, came back and for a long time now he has been uh, facilitating assisting advising in NEPA right now he is advisor to uh, africa and the institute of education planning and administration this is a new initiative by the government of india uh, in collaboration with the african government the way nepa functions the same uh, functions are, uh, are carried forward and this is a new institute to train leaders education leaders in the region african region uh, so many countries in africa so without taking much time let me invite uh, professor k ramchandran <coughs> to speak for about uh, uh, 20 30 minutes on this area he uh, i must say that uh, uh, he is one of the architects of nep 2020 the 65 page document that uh, you see you read lot more is his contribution and right now with dr kasturi rangan he is sitting uh, uh, to to give a shape to national curriculum framework there are four kinds of national curriculum framework one very recently has been dedicated to the nation by the honorable minister and the rest within school education uh, uh, 50% and the three other areas of national curriculum framework including teacher education is coming up you can ask any question we will appreciate if you ask any question please uh, listen to his video which is placed in the swayam uh, uh, platform uh, which is a very very and dr kasturangan's video both the videos you must see both of them have been working harder for the nep 2020 as well as national curriculum framework sir uh, welcome to this program now the floor is yours sir thank you professor panda if you had seen the video by dr kasturi rangan and the one i recorded i don't want to repeat what was said there today i'll try to go more into the curriculum and other aspects uh, the policy talks about uh, a few transformative initiative as indicated earlier programs number 1 is moving towards a new higher education architecture that is moving towards a multi disciplinary education institution second with that a multi disciplinary education program especially at the undergraduate level and at the masters level even though there would be more focus on a specialized area we will also have multidisciplinary aspects in terms of internship in terms of research specialization and so on the third aspect is 
a very important for all faculty autonomy to faculty and higher education institutions what does that mean is freedom to design teach and assess courses based on the national higher education qualification framework within the overall framework of the national higher education qualification framework we can design teach and assess programs in each of our college next priority indicated earlier is a new architecture for higher education institution again teaching intensive universities which will also do research research intensive university which will also focus on teaching and third autonomous or constituent colleges which can award autonomous college can award their own degrees then the next element is very important revamping the curriculum and pedagogical structures by curriculum we mean the totality of learning experiences which include the learning contents transacted teaching excellence or teaching learning process and assessment methodologies and procedures this is what is envisaged through revamping curriculum and pedagogical structures today i might focus on that a little more which may be more useful to all of you as faculty of higher education institutions when we were drafting the policy we used to discuss an example from industrial and organizational psychology and that example goes like this once in the united states of america a machine in a company went out of order the chief executive officer of the company invited a few engineers to find out what went wrong and how to rectify the problem and make the machine functional again the engineers could not do it then came an ordinary mechanic he asked the ceo may i have a look at the machine he had a look at the machine for about 5 minutes he tapped the machine at different places and then he asked the ceo may i have a hammer you know hammer to hit he was given a hammer he hit the machine three places and the machine started functioning he went back and sent a bill for payment of 1000 dollars the ceo said for hitting three times you are charging 1000 dollars it is too much he replied sir i charged only 30 dollars for hitting three times 970 dollars i charged to find out where exactly i should hit what exactly is the problem the problem was a bit of jamming by hitting the jam got released so he said hitting is not important but to find out where exactly i should hit is more important this is one aspect of the policy nb 2020 that we produce a large number of graduates through in person learning through distance learning including online and hybrid learning and so on they can hit but many of them don't know where exactly to hit they cannot diagnose a problem and solve a real life problem 
So one of the aspects of policy in terms of curricular intervention is to create problem solvers. That means problem solving ability. This is one aspect. And this will be done through learning of all disciplinary, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary, or contradisciplinary areas. Last time I was told many do not have a feel of what exactly is multidisciplinary. Why the policy talks about multidisciplinary? There's a reason for that. The policy has a key word, holistic development of students. What do we mean by holistic development? Development of human capacities related to intellectual development, aesthetic development, physical development, social development, emotional development, ethical practices, and moral development all in an integrated form. If you want development of all human capacities, it cannot be developed through only learning one subject area. We will need knowledge and skills related to many subject areas. That is the idea of a multidisciplinary education. You might say, my college is multidisciplinary because we have departments of chemistry, department of economics, department of the arts, and so on. That doesn't make it multidisciplinary. Multidisciplinary institution means that a student is given opportunity to take up courses across various disciplinary areas or interdisciplinary areas like women's studies, biotechnology, and so on. That means, in addition to getting specialized in an area with a 60 credit program, a student may also undergo two minors, maybe 24 credits each for a three-year undergrad program. And if you opt for physics, the minor could be music, the other minor could be a vocational program. We encourage every student to opt for a vocational education program because the policy envisages 50% of students to be enrolled in a vocational education program during the next 10 years, during the next decade. So we not only have multidisciplinary departments, but also offer courses in more than one disciplinary or interdisciplinary areas. I'm asked a question often, what exactly do my multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary areas? I adapt some examples from two authors in education, Park and Cho. Multidisciplinary a team or learning is something like a salad which you eat for lunch or dinner. What does the salad contain? It contains cucumber, tomato, capsicum, carrot, and so on. When you look at the salad, you can see them distinctly, separately, retaining their vegetable area, like cucumber, tomato, and so on. But together, as a team, they make the taste of salad. Similarly, in education, you may have major in physics, 
But you also want to learn something of marketing or financial modeling. You may take economics as a minor. You also want to develop aesthetically. You may opt for visual art or a performing art like music, drama, and so on. Then it becomes a multidisciplinary team. So that is what the policy envisages. Why does it? Because to ensure holistic development of every student, which needs multidisciplinary approach. Second, the term interdisciplinary. It is something like dal tarka or samba or stew when you eat idli or dosa or appam and so on. You cannot distinguish the ingredients of gravy in samba or dal tarka or dal makhani and so on. They gel together to make a taste. This is interdisciplinary. Like women's studies, you will talk about women's development, psychological aspects, statistical part in women's studies and so on. They together make what you call women's studies. Once when I went to a financial modeling discussion in New York, when I entered, I found three groups of expertise in the room, four economics expert, four experts in physics, four experts in computer design. Computer design, not just programming. I told them I understand the importance of economists, computer designers for designing financial model. What would these physics people do here? They explained to me the Brownian motion in physics. Using that, we can explain financial volatility. So to design a financial model, we used a group, a multidisciplinary team. When they design the model, the model becomes an interdisciplinary. You can't distinguish between what exactly is physics in it, what exactly is chemistry in it, or economics in it, what exactly is computer science in it. That is what you call interdisciplinary. Transdisciplinary as example, it is something like a cake. When you eat a cake, you cannot distinguish between the ingredients at all. They all join together and give the taste of a cake. That means many disciplines join together to seek solutions to a real life problem. In Bangalore, we have a transdisciplinary university where problems are looked at from in a holistic way and seek solutions to the problem without looking at each discipline and boundary of discipline. A new term has come, which is something like multidisciplinary, contradisciplinary, which means you take study of disciplinary areas which are distinctly different, like physics together with uh, music, visual art, together with hospitality, hotel management, and so on. Distinctly different, but together they enhance the breadth of knowledge of a student. So what the policy is talking about, both breadth and depth of studies, that makes a person distinctly different from other areas. A policy talks about long back, we used to have kalas. A person who mastered 64 kalas was considered 
as a holistic person. A color means an art, music is an art, mathematics is an art, physics is an art, science is an art, and so on. So if you and I master many colors, we move towards becoming a holistic personality. Now let me come back next. The second important aspect for you and I is to enable a student to be what you call a critical thinker. For instance, a state government or central government presents budget, annual budget. As an economist, you may look at is it job oriented? Will it lead to jobless growth? Cultureless growth, environmentless growth, that is a critical analysis, a critical thinker. That's the kind of thing we look at it. The third aspect is we want to promote creative thinkers. Like if you want to assess the creativity of your students, you might ask your students to draw the logo, a new logo of your college or university. You will get hundreds of logos according to the creative thinking and innovativeness of each student. And giving some. Next, we want to produce a team player. Our students should be a team player, capable of working smoothly as a member of a team and not just compete with each other, leading to a group product. That's a kind of working in teams or as a team player we need. That is an outcome we expect. The next could be a skilled communicator, very well, we can do that. I always give an example of my own experience in my college. When I reached college in Mysore, I had a professor from Oxford to teach English language. One day I reached 30 seconds late to his class. At the door I asked, Professor Brown, can I come in please? Professor Brown replied, you can, but you may not. I didn't understand what he meant. I thought maybe I made a mistake in my tense. So I asked, could I come in please? Reply came, you could, but you might not. Then I linked, can, may not, could, might not. Then I realized, seeking permission, I should ask, may I come in, sir? May I come in, please? And somebody asked me, Hindi mein kya hoga? Can I come in, please? May andar aap aunga kya? Can I come in, please? May I come in? What will that be? May andar asakta ho. My Hindi is not very good. So, may andar aap aunga kya? May andar asakta ho. Look at the difference. Refined language. This is what we expect from a skilled communicator. And we want our students to be a skilled communicator. Then, all our students should be digitally literate and skilled. In future, without being digitally literate, we won't be able to move further. Then, ethical and moral reasoning. Every student should be able to reason ethically and morally. These are 
some of the outcomes we expect out of our students. These are what we call graduate attributes. These are not discipline specific. Every student in our college and university should attain these graduate attributes. A problem solver, a creative thinker, a critical thinker, a digitally literate, skilled person, skilled communicator, a person who can ethically and morally reason, and so on. So I thought I'll come to this. These are also we call generic learning outcomes. Then, second part is learning outcomes related to disciplinary or interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary areas. Four of them. Number one, by the time a student leaves our college and university, that student must be able to demonstrate a coherent knowledge and understanding of a disciplinary area or interdisciplinary area. Linkages between different subject areas within that. For instance, if you have students of chemistry, what is the linkage between physical chemistry, pharmaceutical chemistry, analytical chemistry, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, and so on. And that is very important. If we have students of economics, linkage between microeconomics, macroeconomics, econometrics, and so on. If you're talking about physics student or art student, linkage between music and drama, visual art and performing art, how we can do that is the question. Second, procedural knowledge. If you want to be an economist, what knowledge should our students have? It? If they want to be a teacher, what knowledge should the person have? If you want to be a construction engineer, what knowledge should student acquire? Fourth, third aspect is what you call skills related to the chosen field of study. Skills. If you talk about construction engineering, skills required to build a bridge and the, build, the building should not collapse. That is a skill we are talking. Lastly, application. Can we enable our students to apply what they had learned in relation to a subject? So, four aspects related to disciplinary, interdisciplinary, or transdisciplinary areas. One, knowledge aspect. Second, procedural aspect. Third, skill related to that area. Four, application. Can we ensure our students attain these things? That is why the policy is not talking about outcome-based approach to education. What I indicated are the key learning outcomes. So you and I should be designing teaching learning process to ensure acquisition of these learning outcomes to demonstrate the expected graduate attributes like problem solver, critical thinker, creative thinker, and so on. This brings a change in the role of faculty. The faculty must be able to, if you want to develop problem solver ability in students, the faculty ought to have that first. So therefore, 
faculty orientation, induction programs, refresher programs, they become very important. The purpose of this program is also related to that. Then, multiple approaches to teaching learning process, not just one approach, multiple approaches to learning assessment. Since time is short, I'm shortening it. The policy envisages assessment as learning, assessment of learning, assessment for learning. Assessment as learning means assessment is used by the learners as a self-reflecting person to find out where did I go wrong? How can I make mid-course corrections and learn better? This is using assessment as learning. Assessment of learning is the summative assessment you and I do. End of semester, end of year, and so on. More important, assessment for learning, formative assessment, continuous assessment, used to improve the teaching learning process. And right methodology is important for these purposes. I briefly talked about the curricular implications in terms of an outcome-based approach to education as envisaged in the policy. If you look at paragraph 4.23, there are 18 skills indicated in that policy document. Some of them I explained. There are a few more, and uh, including physical education, health and wellness, yoga and so on, dealing with the environmental education, value-based education and so on. I have a PowerPoint presentation. I have given details in that. It will be uploaded later. You may have a look at it.